Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this video where I want to take you through my method for creating a round shaped painting in soft pastel. I hope that you enjoy this here. If you do, then please do subscribe here on YouTube. Also hit the little bell button for notifications when I release a new video. And if you would like to paint this tiny robin along with me, you can find the full tutorial on my Patreon channel too. This is the first time that I've ever attempted to create a round shaped painting, but I've often wondered if it would be possible because normally when I tape my pastel paper onto a drawing board, I will work the pastel right up to the edge of the tape and there's always that moment when you peel the tape off that you get that lovely crisp edge where the pastel ends and you can see the colour of your pastel paper. And because of how crisp that edge often looks, I've wondered if it would be possible to create a different shape other than a square or a rectangle. So I decided to experiment with a little painting and this little robin seemed like the perfect image to experiment with. When I was choosing a crop for this small painting, neither a square or a rectangle looked quite right for it. And I suddenly thought to try a circular crop. So in this video, I want to share with you the method that I came up with to try and mask off a perfect circle so that my painting would just be this lovely, crisp circle of pigment in the middle of my pastel paper. I learned a few things along the way, some things that I will do next time and some things that I won't do next time. So I wanted to share this video with you and give you all my tips on masking off a perfect circle. So here are the other tools that I made use of. The first thing I did was to create my eight inch circle on a piece of paper. So I'm just measuring the four inches on my compass and I decided to create the circle on a piece of paper first because as you'll see in just a moment when I stick the masking tape over the edges of this, in some places the masking tape overlaps and that might have created a little bump around my perfect circle somewhere. So. This circle will shine through the masking tape, but it's a much smoother circle, I think, by putting it underneath the masking tape instead of on top of. And then I just used four pieces of masking tape to cover the entire edge of the circle. So overlapping just a little bit each piece of masking tape. And the idea is obviously to cut the window, the circular window, out of my masking tape and then use this tape on my pastel paper. Of course, if you're making a bigger circle, maybe you'll need more pieces joined and overlapped like this. And then simply take my craft knife or scalpel, whatever you have. And I had to be a little bit delicate with this. So just really taking my time, trying to run the blade smoothly around the circle. And I found that the best way to do that was to keep moving the paper around like this so that my hand or my arm could always move kind of in the same direction. So I'll add a little bit of time lapse to this because it took me a while. I just really took my time at it, tried to get the circle as precise as I could. Just making sure that the tape is really well pressed onto the paper that it doesn't wrinkle in any section.
and just finally freeing that circular shape in the middle. But of course the part that I'm looking for is the outer part of the tape. I want the little window to add onto my pastel paper. So be careful with this stage. Lift the outer edges of the tape first because you want to lift it all in one piece. You don't want to separate the four individual pieces of tape at this stage. You want it all to come away from the paper as one piece. And that's why masking tape is a good choice for this because it's quite easy to peel off. So that's my window. Then I've got my pastel paper taped to my drawing board. And I'm just lining this up roughly in the center. I've given myself a good few inches outside of the circle so I can crop the painting later on when I mount it or frame it. And then you just want to carefully stick this down, working your way gradually around the edge, making sure you don't get any wrinkles in it. Trying to get it to go on as a nice perfect circle. Just squeezing out any little bits of air or wrinkles as I go. So getting it stuck lightly on first and then once I've got the circular shape looking good, I go back around that edge and I really, really squeeze the masking tape onto the paper. This part is key because you don't want any gaps there where the pigment can fall behind the masking paper. So I'm really squeezing that onto the paper. I don't want any gaps here, especially in the areas where the masking tape overlaps. Just apply lots of pressure and make sure there are no gaps. So I really spent ages just pressing the edge of that down really well. I wanted this circle to be very crisp around the edge so if you leave any gaps here at all you're going to get some messy edge on your circle. And then because I wanted the rest of the paper to remain nice and clean because normally I paint my backgrounds so I can always fix if any pigment falls on my background. I can use the background colour of pigment to clean it. In this case I wanted to leave the paper blank. So I just covered the rest of the paper, especially below the circle where it might fall. Covered the rest of it with the masking tape too, leaving only my circular window. But as you'll see later on, I did get a little bit of pigment that managed to get in behind the tape, just in the bottom left of the painting. So again, even with that outer tape, make sure that you squeeze it on really well and that you won't get any pigment mess up your clean paper. So now I've got my line sketch transferred onto the Fisher 400 pastel paper and I've just double checked that this masking tape is really well stuck around the edges and I think I'm ready now to block in the background. So I start with my darkest green. I'm going to make this background pretty simple, just nice shades of green. But starting with the darkest one. And I can begin to, just using the pastel on its side here, blocking that in. So I'm trying to keep some of the edges visible of the little bird, but I also don't mind if I go over the edges a little bit. And what I need to do around this outer edge, rather than dragging the pigment in this direction towards this edge, I'm going to bring it from the masking tape inwards. So I'm never going to rub it out towards the edge of the masking tape 
just in case some of it goes underneath the masking tape and I lose that nice crisp edge to the circle that I'm hoping to get. But I'm pretty much just going to colour this background in with the darkest green first. And then I can add a little bit of interest over the top of that with some other shades of green. But my main aim with this background is to create that nice crisp circle. So bringing it over the edge and the rest of the work will be done with the blending. And hopefully when I remove the tape at the very end, hopefully we'll get a really nice crisp circle formed with the pigment itself. So just going a little bit more carefully around the shape of the little beak. And of course maybe you're working on a different paper. The Fisher 400 holds a good number of layers but also the pastel goes on pretty solidly so you're gonna see in a, just a moment when I blend this in. I'm not really leaning too heavily but the pastel pigment just wants to go onto this paper. I think because it's got a slightly slightly sanded texture so it really grabs the pigment. So I don't want to put it on too thickly I'm just gonna do this and then give it a bit of a blend with my fingertips. So again, I don't want to push the pigment up towards the, the outer edge of the circle. I want to really drag in the wiz or going around the circle like this. I'm not leaning too heavily here, just very lightly blending that in, coming from outside the circle. or going around the shape of the circle like this. Try not to push the pigment up and underneath the tape if possible. So while I'm blending here I'm actually squeezing the tape onto the paper even more. Just making sure that it doesn't go underneath, hopefully. Of course the moment of truth will be at the end, whether or not I will have created a nice circular shape. We'll see. So it actually works pretty well just to follow around with the shape of the circle. And of course, because Fisher 400 is quite a rough sanded paper, be careful with your fingertips doing this. You can use a sponge blender or something else to do the blending. But I find as long as I don't blend too heavily, so I'm not leaning too hard, I can do this and not really hurt my fingertips. But just be careful if you lean heavily on this. You might sand some of your fingerprints off. So yeah, whatever you're more comfortable with, if you prefer to use a blender to do this, that's totally fine. So I'm really just making that solid green for now. And 
and we've got just a little gap between the legs here as well. Try and drop a little bit of pigment in there. So I've got a couple of other greens chosen just to add a bit of um, dimension to the background. It looks very flat at the moment. So let's add a few other greens in, liven it up a bit. And now I can blend really lightly with my fingertip. I just want to mix that in to the darker green. So I've simplified what I can see in the reference because of course we've got branches going in the background. You could include those, it would actually be quite nice to have some sense of the branches that are further away just crossing behind the bird. Decided to keep mine a bit more simple, especially because it's the first time that I'm experimenting with a circular shape so I don't even know if it's going to work out or not and I decided for that reason to keep the background really simple but with some lovely shades of green just to really set off the red breast of the bird I quite like having this darker area remain around here, so I don't want to cover up all of the darker green. That might even be as much as I bother to do with the background. It's pretty simple, pretty quick to create. And just hopefully enough pigment going around the outer edge. It's so tempting to have a peek at that circular shape now, but I'm going to leave the rest of the paper masked off like this because it means that any pigment that falls, you can see that I do make a little bit of a mess, any pigment that falls will not dirty the rest of the sheet. And hopefully that edge will be nice and crisp. So the only part of the edge left to do, of course, will be the little branch itself. But I think that I'll start work on the bird rather than the branch and come back to that at the end. But I am going to skip us magically forward to the end now and show you the tape removal. So I have washed my hands and I'm ready to remove some of the tape. It's the moment of truth. So I'll get rid of some of the outer 
protective tape first of all and I'm really just hoping that I can do this without making a mess of any of the outer bits of paper and of course if any of this paper does get a little bit dirty I can use a, a rubber to remove some smudges but what I really want is for this edge to be quite clean and crisp so let's see it's the first part of the circle and let's see how it looks so we're still on the masking tape this piece but now we're on to the paper okay it's pretty clean so far pretty clean That is extremely satisfying to remove. Let's go this direction as well. And I'm doing this very gently and carefully. And you'll notice that I've left the tape down at the bottom until the very end, because there are some little bits of pigment falling off as I do this. And there it is, I've got one problem here, which is a bit of green pastel has somehow got underneath the tape and created a bit of a mess there, but it's quite far away from the circle and the circle itself is pretty good. It's a little bit rough around this bottom edge, but I think I can possibly clean that up a little bit. Overall, it's not bad. So I'm really not sure how this part actually got in there because I had all of the paper <laughs> taped over. It just shows you how sneaky this pastel pigment is. It can really get everywhere. So I am very gently taking an eraser and doing my best to remove any little specks. Of course, up here is perfectly clean and it's just because of with the help of gravity really down at the bottom here that we've got a little bit of spillage but it's not bad. I'm hoping that all of this will come off with the eraser. Just very gently making sure that my fingertips aren't going to add more mess to the paper. So this is why I nearly always paint my background colours rather than using the colour that the paper is because inevitably you usually get a little bit of pastel that messes up your background somewhere so by painting the background usually I can cover over any mess like that with the background colours but if you're trying to keep the paper clean like this it's it's so much harder but I think the rubber has done quite a good job there actually I'm quite pleased with how cleanly that came off and I think the only part that I really want to try and fix a little bit is perhaps this tiny part of the edge here again it's because of the pastel falling off and getting trapped in the edge of the masking tape so you need to be particularly careful with the bottom edge just because of gravity sending that pigment down there so what I'm gonna do is uh, to cut the rubber to 
give me a nice sharp edge somewhere on the rubber. A bit like when I break my pastels to get a sharp edge. And let's see if I can just very delicately clean up this edge of the circle. Now one final thing that I want to mention is in the framing of this I'm not a hundred percent sure that I won't get a little bit of pastel fall off onto the blank paper here. So if you're a fan of using fixative maybe you want to spray the background before moving on to the robin. Um, I didn't do that. Maybe that's something to consider next time to actually use a bit of fixative on a painting like this just to ensure that nothing falls beyond the circle and messes up my plain background. But I think what I'm going to do for this one is to take the piece outside and hold it face down and give the whole back of the painting a little tap just to shake off any excess pastel pigment and make sure that there's nothing sitting loose on the surface of the paper that might fall onto my clean background later on. But really what I think will ensure that this stays nice and clean is in the framing process. I think what I'll do is to add a, an outer mount around here and create some space between the painting and the glass so that nothing can actually smudge the painting in future. So that's normally how I ensure the longevity of my pastel paintings, by framing them behind glass. So maybe I'll make another little video when I frame this up and show you what it looks like really finished. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful and that maybe it will inspire you to have a go at creating something other than a square or a rectangular painting. I know for sure I'm going to repeat this circular idea because I think it looks so effective. I can't wait to see what it looks like framed up. And I can definitely see a little series of maybe tiny bird paintings. I think that really suits the circular idea. So if you did enjoy this, please do subscribe to me here on YouTube. I've got lots of other playlists of videos for you to explore. And then, like I said at the start, if you would like to paint this little robin along with me, the full real-time tutorial is over on my Patreon channel. I'll add links to that in the description below. But you can browse my entire library of tutorials that I have available on Patreon before signing up via my website emmacolbertart.com. But thanks very much for watching this here and until next time, happy pastling!